This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company Redlock. I'm sitting down right now with Varun Badwar, who is CEO of the company. Thank you for joining me today. Glad, glad to be here. Absolutely. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I got a lot of great questions here from our tech team, so you ready to get okay. started? Absolutely. All Let's right. do it. So first question, can you tell us about the founding story of Redlock? Sure. So, so our background as founders, there's two of us founders, myself and my co-founder CTO. Um, I come from a background where we spent the last 12 years in the cloud security space. So prior to starting Redlock, I started a company called Cypher Cloud in the uh, cloud access and security broker space. Okay. And prior to that, I was at Salesforce.com for about four years. Um, starting out their founding team around uh, force.com security. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we haven't seen, had sort of an inside out opportunity to see how organizations are starting to adopt cloud services mm -hmm. and how at scale they start uh, getting, um, you know, introduced to new emerging challenges. And so a lot of those insights were fed into uh, Redlock. Okay. And then my co-founder CTO uh, comes from a background in uh, security research with companies like Microsoft, Credit Suisse, wow. and Honeywell. So really understanding sort of the hacker point of view, um, having been uh, at these organizations and defending them against, uh, against various types of attacks. Wonderful, yeah. okay, nice. And uh, what would be the elevator pitch for Redlock? What exactly do you guys do? So Redlock actually helps organizations that are moving to public cloud do so in a manner that's safe, that's compliant, in a manner where if and when uh, problems surface, they have a ability to detect and respond to those threats. And in order to do that, Redlock's built a platform that's extremely easy to deploy. So there's no agents, there's no proxies. Wow. Uh, so it's all API-driven cloud service. And it allows organizations to soup to nuts understand all of their assets in public cloud and also get a better understanding of risk around them. Nice. And now, why is cloud security so important in your opinion? Sure. I think the you know, it's very evident that most organizations are now moving their critical workloads to public cloud, whether it's AWS, mm -hmm. Microsoft Azure, or GCP. And part of that is all of your traditional security controls that you spend the last few decades uh, deploying in mm -hmm. your enterprise are no longer relevant in the cloud. The cloud is highly dynamic. Right. Your developers are decentralized. They have a lot of access to these environments that's privileged. And so the, the whole security model has been turned upside down. Mm -hmm. right? Security is now an enabler. You can't have uh, steps in the process where um, you know, you're doing manual code reviews or you're doing pen tests just given how quickly things change in these environments. And so you know, we believe cloud threat defense mm -hmm. needs to be thought through uh, from, sort of from the ground up and built from the ground up. Absolutely. That makes sense. Yeah. And now, uh, how have machine learning and AI played a role in cloud security, in your opinion? So because of how rapidly changes are surfacing, it's no longer enough to just give alerts about what can potentially go wrong in an environment. And okay. most organizations you talk to are facing alert fatigue. So the last thing they want is more alerts with very little context mm -hmm. or very little actionability around that. And so what Redlock's done is applied machine learning to really enrich the data mm -hmm. and really bring in deeper insights such that we can not only tell you what can go wrong in an environment, mm -hmm. but provide you the full context of what actually is the impact of that and also make it actionable. And that we've been able to do with the power of AI and enrichment of the data through, through advanced machine learning. Okay, wonderful. And yeah. now, how is your solution different from other cloud solutions? So Redlock is different because we've taken an approach which is the fact that we can't look at data like we did traditionally in on-premise data centers. What I mean by that mm -hmm. is in on-premise data centers, you looked at network security as one silo. Then you looked at um, you know, endpoint security, and then you looked at user security. All separately. All right. separately. Okay. And the problem in the cloud, and the reason that doesn't work in the cloud, is because given how dynamic environments are, just looking at network data independently without knowing all the insights about the configurations and the users is inadequate. Again, you it's get true. lost in the data. And so where Redlock is different compared to our competitors or other players in the space is that we look at all of this data collectively, 
and a lot of our IP is based on how we can connect the dots between network traffic, between user actions, and configurations about the environment, okay. along with third-party data feeds. And that would make it much easier for the analyst, I'm sure, as well. Absolutely. They have one place to go, and all of the data has been connected for them, okay. versus typically where they go through uh, weeks and uh, months of trying to collect the data when there's an incident. Okay. Yeah. And now, what does your customer base mainly look like? So most of our customers really fall into two segments. Mm -hmm. One is companies that are born in the cloud. So think okay. about these companies that maybe started in the last five years, right. a lot of tech companies in the Valley. Uh, you know, some that I can mention here on camera are companies like Zenefits, mm -hmm. Nerd Wallet, Viva. Um, you know, again, they've started from the ground up and built architectures that are cloud first. Mm -hmm. But we also have traditional organizations that are large Fortune 500 enterprises, or the Department of Defense oh, that are moving that traditional switch, yeah. uh, monolithic applications. And their first step in the movement to the cloud is what we call lift and shift. They're taking right. traditional architectures and just moving that entire stack into the cloud. Mm -hmm. And then over time, they start re-architecting that to take more advantages of cloud systems. Okay. So, you know, we support both, both classes of those customers. And even within that, uh, some of our customers are just scratching the surface and using yeah. the cloud. And many of them are at, at extreme scale in the cloud. Okay, wonderful. And now, how do organizations need to prepare their cloud environments for compliance with GDPR? Sure. So GDPR is one among many compliance regulations that obviously organizations moving to the cloud have to think about. It's certainly right. top of mind because we have a ticking time clock and you know, by end of May, unless things get uh, deferred further, mm -hmm. need to be solved. And part of those types of compliance requirements is a lot of the ability to not only uh, write processes that mm -hmm. tell you what to do and write controls, but how do you actually provide evidence to your auditors that you uh, have done the right things? Okay. And that part is really, really hard in the cloud, given that things come and go. So to, just to give you an appreciation, mm -hmm. our statistics show that on average, a compute instance, a virtual machine in the cloud, only lives, the lifespan is two hours and seven minutes. Wow. And so think about it. When your auditors come in, they're not just asking you about what's happening today. They want to know what happened over the course of the last few months or a Absolutely. year. Absolutely. And collecting and keeping that data in an auditor-friendly manner is extremely hard. Mm -hmm. And I say that because whether it's GDPR or PCI or HIPAA, no matter what, that's a challenge that a lot of our customers solve with the Redlock. I see. But in, uh, to specifically answer your question around GDPR, mm -hmm. you know, the cloud has made it extremely easy to port data across systems, right? AWS, right. for example, has dozens of data centers across the globe. So a developer could come into work this morning and mm -hmm. say, oh, I'm going to spin up a new instance in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and I'm going to copy over data from the EU data center into Sao Paulo, Brazil. Right. Well, what controls do you have in place to detect and address if that's appropriate? So. Uh. Where Redlock helps customers is actually think of it as security guardrails, right? In the cloud, you really can't prevent your developers from going in there and making changes all the time. Right. The whole beauty of the cloud is the speed and the agility. But what Redlock helps with is you can put these policy guardrails. So when you came into work this morning and you tried to spin up an instance and you tried to copy data over from an environment where you weren't supposed to, Redlock will sort of flag that. Huh. And if you want, auto remediate or prevent that from happening. Okay. And similarly with GDPR, you know, encryption is a key control. You mm -hmm. need to think about user actions and activities, data retention periods, right. audits, logs. And so we help our customers really provide the fabric mm -hmm. that enables them to uh, sort of implement and more importantly, demonstrate those controls to the auditors. Okay, very cool. Okay. And now I'm curious, in your opinion, how do you think that the threat landscape has evolved over the past couple of years? It's very interesting, right? I mean, it, we've been, last few years, we've been hearing about, oh, advanced persistent threats, and, you know, people are, you know, nation state actors spend weeks or months trying to probe your network, find a way in, mm -hmm. sort of recon your environment, and then ultimately find an instance that has the gold mine, yep. and then move the data out. Well, the cloud has made it a lot easier. If you look at last year itself, there was over um, three or four dozen public breaches, and yep. all it takes is a couple of minutes because a developer made a mistake and they pushed uh, a code change or a configuration change that left your entire data store public. Mm -hmm. So I don't even need to try to break through your windows, you've left your front door open, right? And so with the cloud, with the disappearing perimeter, mm -hmm. and more importantly, because organizations using the cloud today, most of them don't have the right visibility and control, um, are facing this problem where a simple mistake mm -hmm. from a developer who's able to today push changes directly into production 
can introduce such threats. And so one of the things that Redlock has is okay. actually a research team called the CSI team, uh, Cloud Security Intelligence. Nice. Like um, and uh, yeah, it's not CSI Silicon Valley. <laughs> uh, but basically what they do is they're, they're looking at all the emerging threats around the cloud. And we published research in October where we found large Fortune 500 companies. Mm -hmm. Their environments had been compromised, not for data theft, but rather, if you think about it, these organizations have master accounts with the cloud providers. Right. Attackers are now breaking in to actually use free compute resources to mine cryptocurrency. Oh and gosh, so it's yes, not even right. about protecting your data. It's now about protecting yourself financially because oh, they're going to come in and they're going to have money grow on trees because they can. You're paying the electricity and power wow. bill to the uh, cloud providers. So, you know, again, those are kind of the emerging threat landscapes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what we find organizations struggling with today is... Almost 1,017 features is what Amazon Web Services launched just in the last 12 months. Wow. As an organization that's consuming these services, it's hard to know what your threat landscape is, what your sort of threat models are with these emerging feature sets. Right. Uh, and so Redlock takes that pain away for our customers because we have this dedicated research team that's always scouring to figure out what kind of emerging problems could, could exist and continuously pushing new policies, new updates into the system mm -hmm. so our customers are continuously protected. Okay, very nice. Yeah. And I was wondering, can you talk about how you not only detect potential threats, but evaluate the risk of those threats? Yeah, that's a great question. And so it comes back to the point I made earlier, mm -hmm. which is it's not enough today just generating an alert saying something could go wrong. No. You really need to quantify the impact and the risk to the business, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in this case, our customer. And so because Redlock takes a more holistic approach where we're not only looking at data and insights from the cloud, mm -hmm. but we're actually correlating that with external third-party threat intel feeds, external vulnerability management feeds, that sort of allows us to actually really quantify the impact and, and make that data actionable. So, mm -hmm. so let's look at a real example. So let's say today a zero-day vulnerability uh, is announced. Mm -hmm. The problem most uh, organizations in the cloud have is they don't even know where they have instances across their cloud environments where that vulnerability could impact them, right? right? And so the first thing is sort of how do I go ask the question? And so what Redlock has done is built this system where mm -hmm. you can use natural language processing, NLP, huh. and just ask simple questions like show me instances in all my cloud environments where I have this CVE ID patch missing and where the instance is exposed to the internet wow. because that would make it exploitable. Very and cool. so rather than just telling you, hey, you have 50 instances that need this patch, we can tell you off those 50, these three mm -hmm. are the ones that are internet exposed, running sensitive workloads, and missing the patch. And so the prioritization mm -hmm. uh, sort of comes through with naturally with the system. Right. And now you have that knowledge to know, like, okay, this is what I need to do first. That's then. what you need to do Wonderful. first. Wonderful. Okay. Correct. And now, what would you say is the biggest pain point enterprises are facing when it comes to securing their public cloud environments, and what can be done to solve those issues? I think the biggest problem people have is they don't even know what exists in their public cloud environment. Yeah, so what we find much. is, well, it's all decentralized. So you go to a large organization, they could have 100 to 500 different cloud environments in just AWS, Azure, oh and gosh, GCP. Yeah. And you know, we ask simple questions like, do you even know where you have databases that are exposed to the Internet in these environments and people can't tell? Wow. So my mantra there is you can't secure what you can't see. And so the fundamental problem is you need to really build an asset inventory for mm -hmm. what's in the cloud and sort of keep it constantly up to date. That's a hard problem because of how quickly the cloud is changing. Right. But, you know, once you get that visibility, then it's much easier to put controls and say, mm -hmm. here's how I'm going to validate my architecture. Yep. Uh, these are my policy or compliance guardrails. So that's an important part of this journey in the cloud. But what we should not forget is it's a matter of time before every organization is going to have some security incident. Right? We yep. can't protect ourselves from everything. And so the detection and response capabilities are so critical because when that incident occurs, where would you go to investigate? How right. would you investigate? Where do you start even? And especially when these environments are getting spun up and torn down every few minutes. Mm -hmm. right? And so sort of we fundamentally believe having like a time machine for the cloud is so important. Yeah. And part of what Redlock allows their customers to do is have this time machine built into our platform. So you could go back into Redlock and say, I want to see what happened last Friday between mm -hmm. 5 to 6 a.m. Wow. in this particular environment. And it actually produces a full map 
to show you what exactly happened. And, nice. and that's super critical in environments that are changing so dynamically. And how far back can you go, would you say? Uh, you can go back as long as you want. It's a pure function of licensing wow, costs. Okay. So uh, it just depends on your organizational standards. Very nice. Yeah. And now, what are a few key practices every organization should follow to properly secure their public cloud environments? So I think it's really fundamentals. I don't think cloud has you know, changed what fundamentally you needed to care about in security, right? right. So the first Just thing again is... people to care. It's, and the way you enforce that and get the ability to sort of enforce those processes mm -hmm. has changed, right? So right. security is no longer one where you do point-in-time assessments. It's no longer how you do manual code reviews mm -hmm. or pen tests periodically necessarily itself. What you really need is the ability to continuously monitor your environments. So at any point, you know at every minute, every hour, which user did what to environment, what yep. the impact was. Beyond that, you really need capabilities that allow you to actually um, quantify your risks. So mm -hmm. this is where I talked about, hey, not only tell you what can go wrong, but actually tell you what is going wrong, what is impacting your environment today, mm -hmm. what's most urgent to fix. And you know, last but not the least, really making sure that you've simplified this for your analysts, because most organizations will tell you it's very hard to hire highly qualified people. And so you yeah. should have systems that will enable a t sort of L1 analyst to very quickly understand what's happening in the mm -hmm. environment and not only tell you what's wrong, but really give you the controls and the commands to go fix it without you having to be an expert in the cloud mm. services itself. And that helps so much with the efficiency, it sounds like, Absolutely. as well. Wonderful. Absolutely. Okay. And now I'm curious, what are some interesting discoveries Redlock CSI researchers have found? Yeah, there's been a few different things that we've published. It's all available on our website, but some of the examples is we were one of the first to talk about all the crypto jacking in the cloud mm. use cases. So uh, as I mentioned, there were some Fortune 500 companies we found this for. Um, we've actually um, you know, helped organizations, a, a European uh, retailer, actually take down about a million plus records of social security numbers that were exposed accidentally wow. online. Uh, we've helped a telco company in the U.S., one of the big... Uh, big five telcos, yep. take down about a half a million records of PII information that was nice. accidentally exposed. Um, and we published a lot of research and advisories about uh, sort of best practices and emerging threats as well. So there was a problem uh, in 2017 around configuration of Google Apps and Google mm -hmm. Groups. So we pushed some advisories around that as well. Nice. So, you know, it's, it's just all over the place. And, uh, you know, ultimately we're not commercializing that service, but right. it's just sort of do good and be good, mm -hmm. uh, and really helping organizations understand and build awareness around cloud security. Very nice. Okay. And lastly, are there any other things you'd like to highlight about the company? No, look, I think we're really excited. We're seeing tremendous growth in adoption for uh, Redlock, whether customers just thinking about starting in the cloud or they're at scale in the cloud. The mm -hmm. technology, the platform has been uh, you know, designed in a way where it's so easy to deploy. It takes no more than a couple of minutes for a customer to set up, no matter how large or small their environment is, and it provides immediate value. And our customers are rapidly expanding their footprint around Redlock because mm -hmm. you know, it's unlocking a lot of potential from a visibility, from a control and, and monitoring standpoint. So all in all, super excited and uh, yeah, looking to see how the company grows. Awesome, thank you so much for sitting down and speaking with me today, I appreciate it. Of course, it. yeah, thanks for your time as well. Absolutely. And that's all the time we have for today, so be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on HackerArsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.